we're back out here in windy, beautiful Texas, actually. Clear skies, horses, tractors, big giant studio and a barn behind me. We're gonna be checking out The Noise Factory with Eric Meyer. Very excited about that. I'll put links to his studio down in the description if you guys wanna follow him or if you're in Texas and you wanna come check it out. Also, I'm sure you'll be seeing lots of gear in here that you can find on our sponsor, Sweetwater's website. So I'll put links to that stuff down in the description as well. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring all these studio tours. Let's go see if he answers the door. <laughs> I wonder how big this place is. Just as a guess, let me know in the comments what you think. What'd you say, 10 square feet? We'll call him. Right? Yes, sir. Hey, Eric. We have arrived. Yeah. I, I don't know if I should let myself in or not. You should let yourself in. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> wow. I don't, I don't know if you can see that with the exposure here. Okay. Wow, that's pretty incredible. Eric. Andrew. Dude, thank you so much for having us out here. Thank you for coming out. This is uh, well, this is uh, crazy. Is it, you do this for all of your guests? Yes. Wow. Makes the, uh, the guests feel welcome, definitely. The goal is to make everybody feel appreciated that comes out here. Well, uh, again, I appreciate you having us. So t walk me through, what is, what is this building? What did it start as? What was the idea? And where are we in the building right now? So we are really just at the front door coming into the building. This was farmland when we started. We built this thing from the ground up to be a studio. We didn't retrofit this to be a studio. A lot of work. Yeah. It took about eight years of my life to get what we've got. Amazing. So. Well, this is definitely a unique layout. You mind walking me through this, this portion here? So come on over here. Um, Bathrooms. Nice. Got bathrooms. We got two of them. That's that is a luxury. Two bathrooms. I can stink one up, and you get the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my small studios. Oh, sweet. So we also do lessons as well. All right. There isn't really anything we can't do in these rooms. We can teach composition, audio engineering. Uh, we use, you know, we do piano lessons if you need guitar lessons. But we didn't want you to have to bring a guitar amp with you. Sure. Just really bring your guitar, plug into the uh, interface, and. Go to town. All right, so I see there's three three rooms there. One, there two, are three. Three rooms. And are they all kind of like this layout? They're similar, yeah. Nice. So they all have acoustic treatment in them. You know, yeah. um, It's like a, a sweet writing room. Yeah, and they were built really for two people in mind, not more. Um, it's very uh, activity focused, if you will. Sure. So yeah, we have the Personas Quantums. 2626, they get the job done. This is a nice keyboard for three for all these rooms. Yeah, so you know, the near field monitors. Yeah, what is, I've never seen fluids before. So these are the Fluid Audio FX50s. And when I was at NAMM, you know, I'd been going around listening to speakers, but I walked in, checked these guys out, and they had something that just really kind of got my attention. This was a, a byproduct of the speakers that really got my attention. But when I put them in here, I was like, oh my God, these things have a big footprint for such a small speaker. And what kind of computers do you use? These are all Mac mini quad cores. Holy cow. And uh, they're all maxed out. They all have uh, solid state terabyte Woo! hard drives. Yeah. Eventually I'll probably slap another one in. And then like, so all these desks that you're seeing, uh, these are all made by Wasteland Guitars. My friend, Jeremy Robble. Mm -hmm. He's just a hell of a woodworker. That's the short answer. And these are all made out of pure maple. There is no par particle board whatsoever. That's nice. It's always nice to have a friend who's a woodworker. All these acoustic panels. Everything, every acoustic panel you'll see in this tour. Yeah. My wife helped me wrap. My friend Taylor Anderson helped me build a few of these corner traps and then move them in because they only got heavier as they went along. Sure, yeah. So these all have a two inch air gap in the center of them. Oh, cool. Over here we have another one. It's amazing that you have three extra spaces. Well, so let's say you had a five, pe five piece band. I could track drums and you say, hey, I need to record or work on bass lines in one room, yeah. guitar lines in another, vocals in another, and I've still got more rooms to go. 
That's great. It's awesome. Oh, this is I, cool. I've been going to NAMM for a long time now, and uh, me and my wife, who, you know, she's been going with me, so we just, this is a little of our memorabilia. Man, what a cool collection. I mean, I, I got my Bootsy picture. <laughs> Lots of wood. You must have bought this wood before. Uh, oh yeah. We, before we, the recent years. We wrapped up construction, fortunately, well before any of the stuff happened. Oh, okay, so dang, three, four, five. Wow. Yeah, this is nice. Man. Okay, so this is the medium room. This one and the other one is the medium room. And on these ones, we're running um, a pair of Cali N8 version twos. Oh yeah. I've heard good things about these. Much to my surprise. Yeah. Yeah, this is cool. This is actually like, you know, I when I started doing these videos, I did a lot of home studios. And this is really the size room most people are working in, or at least a lot of people who watch the channel and a lot of friends that I have who are just have an extra room at home if they can trick their girlfriends or wives into, you know, sacrificing one. Yeah. This is a, now again, this is a, these are desks built by Jeremy Robel at Wasteland Guitars. Quantums in every room? Uh, these are the Quantum 2632s. And you know, every, every room has more than likely a Surgex power supply or power conditioner. Mm -hmm. So are you a, you're a player as well? I am a player. I, I consider myself mediocre at best because I've been shown what, my, in my opinion, the best are. So yeah. I have to work twice as hard to be half as good. And it's kind of disappointing. Yeah. That's the curse of working in the studio. Take you over into production room number five, which sure. is. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is nice. How did that happen? Oh, that looks fun. <laughs> Party time. I wasn't expecting that to be. This uh, is where you were when we were knocking. You're up here partying. Yeah, yeah. Nice sign here. Yeah, well, Price Hal, he he painted that for me and. Oh, dang. Yeah, yeah, I, I really like to support the mom and pop shops around, you know. Um, I want to get something like this for the back of my new room above the stairs. I'd love to get something with like an LED or something around it. Well, we, that's why we put a big old French cleat on the back of it so I can put backlighting on it mm. should I want. Yeah, yeah, French cleat, all right, don't forget. Th this is a, the, the guitar built by Jeremy at Wasteland. Um, the unique thing about this is all these inlays were done by hand. Wow. The guitars, this, this eight string and the other two seven strings, they are for soggy custom guitars made by a guy in Pflugerville. Yeah. So this one happens to be eight strings with 29 frets. Oh, this is cool. Got it. I put a kill switch on everything. Beep, 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 beep. You know, That's like fun. set the world to blow up or something. Yeah. Like this black Schecter, this was my first seven string ever. Mmm, diamond series. I got one of these, but it's probably, mine's probably a lot cheaper than this, but this is called a D chord. And that is an awesome D chord. I'm sensing a, uh, a style of music in the rock world, hard rock, I, heavy metal. I, I, I mean, I like my metal, I like rock. I like good music in general, as long as yeah. it's good. I really don't care what genre. So we're also running, you know, some Cali N8s. Nice. Got the complete Mac Mini. What are you, are you using Pro Tools, Logic, so Ableton, In Reaper? all the rooms we're using um, Studio One and Logic. Studio One, there we go. And in the studio we're using Logic, Studio One, and Pro Tools. Oh, I like that sustain pedal. That is cool. Does that come with the complete one? No. I've had that forever. That's cool. And I, I never can figure out how to use the second pedal. Oh, okay. Is this supposed to be like a dampening? I guess you can assign it. You're doing a lot of your like day-to-day -day work up here? I do it all over in here. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of live studio performances. As time permits, we're starting to branch out into gear demos and whatnot, guitar stuff. Sure. Oh, that's cool. So you guys do video stuff too? Mm -hmm. that's cool. So it's really more of a multimedia production facility. Cool. It's not just a recording studio like we'll do guitar clinics we're even uh talking about doing guitar camps bass camps oh cool so this is the storage and oh yeah this is this is our little uh, tribute to nashville if you will my dad who's a retired teacher would acquire instruments for auctioning to help students with their education 
you know, oh, college cool. or otherwise. So yeah. uh, these guitars, you know, signed by Rascal Flatts, Shadaisy, Josh Grayson, Kelsey Ke Ballerini. And then of course, storage. Yeah, it's a luxury. You got a giant room for storage. That is amazing. No matter how much room I have, I don't have enough. Yeah. I've been building this for eight years. The studio was opened about probably three or four years ago. Okay. And then it took me, you know, that amount of time afterwards to finish building this because a lot of this was done by myself. Yeah. Uh, my friends, you know, Mark and Anthony, they helped me do all this, but sometimes they weren't available. So, you know, it slow goes the roll with one person. Yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah, so here's our lounge. Yeah. Oh yeah, you guys do family dinners in here? Yeah, we do. Heck yeah. This is a proper table. Snacks, trail mix, fresh water. Oh, this is kind of cool. Yeah, so you press the button on, as opposed to having the- uh, Yeah, the little- The thing, well, the, uh, the dispenser where you have to put the bottle in the bottom or throw the bottle on top. And you just set it down. That's just rechargeable. Press the button and it pumps out water. Well, welcome to the studio. Holy cow. This is amazing. And look at those speaker stands. Where do you get something like this? You get them made. <laughs> so fortunately, my friend Dave DeValle, who designed this studio, and he literally built the majority of it. Uh, my friends would come over and help us raise walls and whatnot. I, I told him what I wanted as far as speaker stands because I didn't see anything out there that met my standards or what I was looking for. Yeah. And the nice thing is they are filled with sand. What are these? So those are Emotivas. So uh, Emotiva is a electronics company, speakers, amps out of, I believe, Nashville. Did you get branded cables? Yeah. The XLRs on the connectors say noise factory. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, yeah, so they're, they're four conductor XLR cables with extra shielding. Oh wow! And uh, I didn't. I really didn't appreciate what they do until I actually connected them, and then all of a sudden there was a bunch of bottom end that came in. Yeah. And I'm like, that's like the double insulated. So you got two signals. Yeah, I, four conductor and yeah. double insulated. I mean, it just, it's like it opened up everything. I'm like, wow. What appear to be Yamaha HS8s on the surface, they are actually modded by Zen Pro Audio. Yeah. They pulled out the crappy resistors and capacitors and they put in, you know, Burr Brown. Um, they also pulled out the limiter. So it really opened up the sound of the uh, speakers. It, it sounded oh, like cool. a blanket was taken off them. That's awesome. And then where'd you get this desk? Is this your buddy? Me and my friend Randy uh, built this and we just kind of sat around and kicked ideas back and forth. And desks are like hard to execute. The concept and the designing is one thing, but then like, you know, something like this, where you got all the weight in the middle. Getting the support right and like being able to adjust and stuff, that is not, uh, not easy. And it's far from a perfect desk, but it is hugely functional. You yeah. know, everything was intended for a person five, eight or taller so we could keep their head in the sweet spot of listening more often than not. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have to get out of the seat and go to channel one. Sure. And, and get out of the sweet spot to come back. And I like that you have you you have both the flat racks and the uh, upright racks. Yeah, and there are times that I wish it was angled, but you know, yeah, I squabble over little things. So sure. basically, I wanted to cross a mastering desk with a kind of a studio desk. Mm -hmm. Well, these really work out with the 500 racks because you can really squeeze a lot in there. I know you got a lot of five. I mean, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I do have a That's lot. awesome. Part of it was for built-in redundancy because if for whatever reason a preamp goes out, mm -hmm. we just jump over to another one. So how many IO do you, are you using in here? Um, well, so the Antelope has 32, but we're really only using 24. The last yeah. eight is dedicated to the Hearback unit. Right, and then you have a nice variety here. These are Cappy, right? Yep, so these are uh, the VP312s, the first eight, Mm -hmm. um, the second is the VP25s, mm -hmm. and the third one are the VP26. And really, the, for lack of a better way of putting this, the, the big difference is one has a, the first eight have a large output transformer, the next eight has a medium, 
and the last eight have, have a small. So they break up faster if you want them to. So these are the DIY RE uh, Pultec EQs, which I built. Oh, cool. Um, actually, I built seven of them. My friend Pat Devaney, he's the one who taught me how to solder. So. Oh, cool. So we have eight channels of Pultec EQ. We have eight channels of compression. And what are these? Okay, DBX. RNC, I've heard, I actually heard these are fantastic. The really nice compressors. I really like them. What, what's, now, if I'm understanding this correct, there's two modes, super nice and normal. Okay. And my understanding is super nice is like two compressors daisy chaining into one another. Oh, okay. So like soft compression followed by a little more soft compression. Mm -hmm. And then uh, these are the limiting compressors. Okay. And uh, then the Tone Lux. More mostly preamps or? Mostly, yeah. so, uh, you know, our reamp module. Mm -hmm. You can tweak tones until your heart is content. We have uh, Chameleon Labs 581. And then we start getting into the boutique stuff, which is the AML Easy 16s. And then uh, these are actually two mic pre's, Sound Sculptor. And then we have the Sound Sculptor 73s. We have Germanium mic pre's which these are out of Italy. Um, they come as a, a kit. Cool. And these are Yan Lu, which memory serves me correct, are Harrison mic pre's. Okay. And then these are total audio control and these would be AMAC. Nice. And of course the warm audio 312s. Yeah. And so then I have eight uh, spaces for overflow for the future should I decide to grow. Sure. Is that 24 up there? That's 24. And then you just, if you want to sub for something, you, you can have create extras. any channel strip you want. Yeah, that is nice. That's fun. So I, you know, so if you have whatever brand of console, you have that one basically flavor of mic pre strapped across whatever channels. Yeah. Well, here you can make your own channel strip to your satisfaction. Yeah. And are these audio accessory? They are. Crash bay? Yeah. Good eye. Yeah, man, those are good. I like those. Just a little extra space. And yeah. that was what I liked about them because, you know, I got fat fingers. Yeah, it, well, I mean, it. when you're wiring them, you really appreciate it on the Which back. Which, again, I like DB25 connectors, so that's one of the things that I like about my lunch boxes is it's all, it's all DB, DB to DB. And then you got even more back here. I got more gear. This This looks familiar. I haven't done too much Audioscape yet. I've heard fantastic, you know, reviews and stuff on their gear. How do you like it? I like it, um, particularly on their bus compressor. The, my favorite thing is it's an internal side chain, mm -hmm. so it's fixed. I don't have to worry about wiring out to another piece of gear. Sure. Uh, that decomp, that thing sounds killer on snares. And this stuff's made out of Daytona. Chris Yetter, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's just. It's, he's awesome. And then the red piece of gear is what they call it. So it's a, this is a DIY kit boutique piece from, made by, or the, the circuit board was by Volker Mayer. My friend Pat Devaney built it. I bought it from him. Mm -hmm. It is a 76 meets a 2A meets a Joe Meat compressor. There was about six tubes in there. Oh my gosh. Um, and what, do you, what are you putting that on? Uh, mastering. So it's, a, it's got a back trawl inside of it, which basically, the, the basic concept is it's kind of a two-way opto sensor. Uh, right, yeah, we were just talking which about that. Which they don't make back trolls anymore from what I've been told. And then we have the 76s, the two-ways, the EQPs. How do you like these and what are you like using these on? I, I wish I, I, I don't really marry to a lot of gear very often. Uh huh. Um, as long as I can get it sounding the way I want into the box, they're tools. Sure. And however, I am really partial to these 73s. Yeah. yeah. Heck yeah, man. Me too. Yeah, those are fantastic. That's actually what got me interested in the company was the when I used those. And now I have 10 of them and they're awesome. And what's this, 61? This is 61? the 61. Oh, that is. Mm. We, we do something a little bit different because most places, you know, they have to set up a, a mic to, to hear audio, you know, people talking in the other room, the live room. Well, we have a boundary mic hanging from the ceiling, which my friend Thanos, he soldered it from about 14 feet up in the air. Wait, hold on. What was his name? Thanos. Thanos? You met him yesterday. Oh, at Warm? Uh-huh. Oh, okay, nice. 
Yes, his name's Thanos from the Avengers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he's just cool as hell, and he, he did something kind of ridiculous. So we have a, a dedicated talkback system from the live room to the control room. Yeah. So he, I brought out a 14-foot ladder, and he soldered 14 feet off the ground for this one mic. Oh, my gosh. So we run it into the symmetrics, which I run into this fluid speaker. Uh-huh. And uh, you can turn it up and down according to what Just you want to hear. Just hear what's going on out there. But it's a downward expander, which means all the loud stuff gets squashed to the volume of normal dialogue. And so you can still hear the normal dialogue when people are just making a ton of noise. Wow. What are those things on the top there? The Captor X's, load boxes. Ah, I thought, I thought I recognized that's two notes. That's who partnered with Rev, right? Mm-hmm. That's cool. So, you know, depending, like when we're doing live video shoots, mm -hmm. Let's say you bring an amp head and we're trying to get really clean audio. Yeah. We'll run the amp head into this. And let's say, for example, you're in the small vocal booth mm -hmm. singing, playing guitar. Yeah. Who wants to have that amp bleeding into that vocal mic? Sure. So we'll use these for that application. That's the drummer monitor controller, right? Uh, the MC 2.1. MC 2.1. How do you like it? It's great. It gets the job done nicely. I, I, part of what I needed was a built-in talkback. Yeah. So that you, so we route um, the last channel of our hearback system through Pro Tools. Well, actually all of our channels are run through Pro Tools. Sure. But what's nice is, you know, you can just sit here and talk to people as you want. Goes to the queue, straight to the queue. Right, straight to the queue. Nice. One of the things that we have is we have speakers overhead as well in the live room where we can talk to you through your headphones or through the speakers overhead. So, and we have line of sight for all the rooms. Nice. And that, that was important for us. And then you got a big old lounge over here. We do. And, and it really was intended so that, you know, <sighs> when the artist isn't recording or doing something, if they're not in the lounge, they can be back here. Wow. And not be bothering the engineer. Yeah. Just kind of a, it's like the room was sort of divided in half. Yeah. As we were building this, one of the things that I found that was problematic with a lot of studio furniture was getting into the rear of the cabinets. Yeah. So, because I like magnets, I do some squirrely things. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Then I can just sit down and do whatever I need to do, and then when it's all said and done, I just put it back up. So you're in my small vocal booth. This is my idea of a small vocal booth. Yeah, this is great. So sometimes it's cool you... treatment too. I, I, never, I still haven't finished it out the way I wanted. I just need to come in and put some trim. I had issues with, you know, vocal mic stands. You know, mm -hmm. adjusting them easily. So I found a speaker stand. Yeah, look at that. So this is what I would call a two fifty one meets a C twelve. That's their V thirteen. It, it's one of my favorite mics. Yeah. I, I mean, I like what I like, and that's. A short answer. Custom panels in yep. each booth. Redco. <laughs> yeah, we're wired for 48, which is a bit on the probably overkill Excessive, side. Excessive, yeah. So there's eight here. Um, and then when you get into the live room. Yeah. There's actually eight behind the curtains. Wow. Yeah, this place is huge. I love that the little area up there too. It's always nice to be able to I'll just throw a mic up there or throw somebody up there. Or lighting. Or lighting. Or throw somebody off of there. Yeah, or whatever. You know. Camera. Or if they want to stage dive, we can we can capture it and YouTube it and Yeah. I mean you like, could do a little showcase up there, you know. Exactly. A little cocktail party down there, singer. So that was actually designed by my friend Dave. And he built it and then we came out and we put it up. Obviously you could do full band sessions in here. You could do gosh, you could do strings, horns, whatever. But you can also do full on video shoots and you yeah. have like a channel and stuff. What's the name of the channel? Uh, the Noise Factory. The Noise Factory on YouTube? Yeah. All right, I'll put a link to that down there because I'm sure you have some cool stuff on there. Yeah. And so uh, when Dave, he wired the, when we were designing it, he pre thought out that he wanted speaker wires or XLR yeah. connectors up top. Some big amps over here. What are these little robots? Are these like the electric these control are the things? Dynamounts. Okay, so it's got an Ethernet. Is that for like the, Actually, the remote? It's wireless. It's on Wi-Fi. Oh, whoa. 
So That's crazy. Uh, uh, these actually do have what they call the capsule lock. So there's two ways that this thing can, you can position the mic. You can position, you can swing it this way. Oh, like a tilt. Or you can swing it on the capsule. That's crazy. So because this is not a small space, walking the longest line all day long gets old really quick. Well, also it's nice to be able to put a mic up and then adjust the position in there. Because yeah, if I, if I have to keep walking in and out of there, yeah. I'm gonna lose my frame of reference. Yeah, all right, so you got a, a theme here. You like the crank stuff. I used to be, I was having a, a retail store-ish uh -huh. and I'd bought some of their stuff and then shortly thereafter, they went out of business. So I never parted with it. Um, I actually like the amps. What's ironic about them is the clean channels are actually really, really good. Um, this thing's a Fender Twin, the Krankenstein. So if you're a Dimebag Daryl fan. And then I, I wanted to ask, yes, sir. as you can see the exposed floor in here, tell me about the structure. So all four sections of the building that you've walked through are decoupled from one another. Wow. So, uh, the, the smaller rooms, the small and medium, yeah. that section is not touching the control room and the control room, the vocal booth and this room, they're not only not touching each other, but they're not touching the walls or the ground or the ceiling. So it's a box wow. inside of a box. Wow. That is, uh, that's cool. So you, you basically poured the slab, built the barn, struck, you know, bones, and then built more rooms inside it. Yep, so everything is sitting on U-boats. Wow. Yeah, this is great to be able to move these around, the drums and... So like the bass traps, these are double-sided. Um, yeah. They have a two-inch air gap in the middle of them. And so, you know, sometimes uh, we have clinics from, with artists from other countries, so they remote into this big old 65-inch nice. TV. Okay, so tell me about that a little bit. You, you, you do clinics as well? Yeah. I have a lot of guys from other countries, uh, Italy, Norway, and now Puerto Rico. If you want to attend a clinic, be it from uh, Gianluca or Faro or Demetrio Scopoliti, you know, they'll remote in and you can actually ask questions and conduct a clinic. That's amazing. Learn whatever you, you want. Where'd you get the idea to do that? All the things that frustrate me in the world, I'm trying to change. Yeah. That's what I'm doing here. That's awesome. So, you know, like for example, uh, who, who's a drummer you'd like to learn from? That lives in another country. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I was gonna say Aaron Sterling, but he's like in Nashville. He's just busy. You know, like Mike Tirana. Okay. I could get him to remote in. You know, he can do a clinic. You could do drum pads and work on whatever subject, but you can ask him questions real time as opposed yeah. to with a video where you're kind of locked in to, you only get to watch, you can't interact. Right. So this is our large vocal booth slash small drum room. Again, we keep the, the line of sight. Yeah. Yeah, you still seeing the control room. That's great. Shredding on on a 12 string bass, you know. And My you're man. Tearing it. <laughs> 12 string bass, shredding. <laughs> we, have, we have amp rooms, so. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that is super dead. The question that people ask me in the story they get, why did you put a balcony? Mm -hmm. Well, at the time me and Dave were sitting out here and he said, you really want to build those amp rooms all the way up to the ceiling? And I'm like, well, what do you want? He goes, you want to build a balcony? I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's build a balcony. Yeah. And so he, uh, he designed the rail. So, and he was right, you know, to build those rooms all the way up to the ceiling was yeah. just a, a waste of Overkill, space. Overkill, yeah. So one That's of great. the things that I enjoy is we can plug amp heads in out here and control the, the cabs, or we can plug them from the, play them from the control room. That's great. And then what's, what do we got through here? So when Dave okay. designed it, um, you know, he made it so we could walk a circle. Because what would suck more than walking through the one side having to go back out the same side yeah. when you're on this side. So we call this the load-in zone. Oh yeah, look at that. So yeah, you can, this is the literal separate rooms here. That's crazy. 
And then you have parking for a couple cars here, huh? We have parking for about 30. 30. <laughs> it's pretty good. Well, this is beautiful, man. Are you happy? Thank you. I am. Are you? You? you should, you should. This is absolutely amazing. Well, there's a lot of people that have helped bring this to life, you know? Believe it or not, my parents are actually involved in this. And you know, so it's, there's a bunch of people without them. This doesn't exist. Yeah. Really, really towed the line. I mean, they helped me out immensely. It turned out beautifully. I would be so, so, so happy to have a place like this. Well, cool. I appreciate you having us out, man. This is, this is a really special place and uh, I'll make sure to put links to your website and your YouTube channel and anything else that you want to share. Um, happy to put that down there so people can follow you. I would appreciate the help. Well, I appreciate you having us out and uh, we'll get out of here, your hair and- uh... Not in my hair. <laughs> it's kind of nice to have someone to talk to in this big old building.